More Entraniacs. This is uh, Half Iron Man Puerto Rico. It's time to go. So, this is it. The hay is in the barn, the work is done. It's just time to like sharpen up, taper, rest, get there. Getting there might be the hardest part about all this. It's stormy all back here. Stormy down in, in Chicago. Let's hope I'm racing. Now, normally, I like to get to a race early. Well, at least I've been getting to races early. But I tried leaving like really tight. Today's Thursday, race is Sunday. We're gonna see how that works. I got reasons. It's early, it's, it's like 7.30 and it's dark here. We're gonna, I'll explain more later. Who's excited to get out of Winnipeg? You are. <laughs> you are too. I am. I am. We have got to hurry if we want to make it to San Juan today. Hurry very, very much. Chicago is not a big airport, right? She's been sprinting. It's totally fine, totally fine. I don't know what the big hurry was. Okay, so let me tell you how to organize your taper processes, whether it's a taper week or a taper series of days. A couple of big things. Number one, so I'm of the opinion that your taper process starts months, years out, like the entire philosophy of how you train is part of your taper process. Let's say here is the level that you want to be at, kind of like moderate. If you accumulate massive amounts of fatigue, it's going to take you longer to recover. Whereas if you manage fatigue throughout the buildup to the race, and it's more moderate, you don't need a very big taper. So often people are doing like two week tapers, three week tapers. In my opinion, that's a longer amount of time that can go wrong. So I, for sprint Olympic half Ironman, like doing just a one week taper. Now how you do that taper goes like follows. If you have, let's say this is day zero, like that's race day and one day out, two days out, three, four, five, six, seven, you want a couple of days to completely flush the fatigue. And those days are the first day of the taper and two days out from the race. These two days are complete rest. And what we're doing there is we're flushing out all the fatigue. It's good to do a little bit of foam rolling, maybe go for a walk in the morning. But these are your complete days off. And if it's a two week taper for say a half Ironman, which I believe is totally okay, we just change that to two days and 14 days. So it's your first day of the taper process and then two days out from the race. And then hopefully when we're in Newark, I will have time to work out and I'll explain what you do in between. But now we gotta get on this flight that I didn't think we were gonna get on. Well that, Traniacs, did not go according to plan. We were grounded in Chicago waiting for that plane to leave for an hour and a half, two hours, and the plan was to in between flying into Newark and leaving for San Juan, Puerto Rico, I was gonna go for a run. We don't have time for that. So instead, while we're here in Newark waiting to go to Puerto Rico, just do a little bit of foam rolling. Get that done. 
Now, this is all kind of a whole big test. Normally, I've been getting into races, as I mentioned, like five, six, seven days ahead of time, really easing in, settling into the area. But what I was finding is that I would eat really bad, gain about four pounds in water weight leading into that, and then I wasn't sleeping super well. If it was a hot weather race, I would get sunburned. So by the time I got into the race, I was already like losing fitness, feeling kind of dumpy, not really well prepared, so we try something different. And this is how a lot of the pros do it. The vast majority of them fly into their half Ironman, like their less key races on Friday, build their bike really quick, do a little sharpen up workout on Saturday, boom, race Sunday, leave Monday. So we try it, we see what happens. Still gonna try to get in a workout maybe late tonight when we get into Puerto Rico. Whether I do or don't get in that workout, I'll, uh, I'll explain what you do for the taper workouts. Because some people on Instagram this week were like, oh, that's pretty fast for a taper workout. Not so much. It's tiny little foam rollers. Wicked. It's in my back. Last thing, because it's 2.20 in the a.m. How you do your workouts during a taper process is that you want to bring the volume, like the time or distance, whatever you track down to about 50 to 60% of your normal workouts. But you want to keep the intensity. I'm gonna get this totally wrong, but there was a study once that split into three taper groups, a bunch of test subjects. One taper group did absolutely nothing. The next taper group did something like, I think it was like 50% of the volume, but zero intensity. And the third taper group did, I wanna say like 10% of the volume, but all intensity. Which one did the best? The 10% with all intensity. So that's not to say that you should cut it back to just 10% of what you do, but the idea is to cut back and keep the intensity so that you don't lose as much fitness, but you're also giving your body a chance to rest. You're also reminding it how to move fast. And what will happen is this. So this is my Elevate for Strava. This is kind of like training peaks and we'll just go to, that's the past three months. You can see nice purple line, fitness steadily building, 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 building. And then we'll go to the last seven days. And what you see is Monday morning, that was after my most key workout, the biggest workout of this entire build, my form was minus 30. That's a measure of how fit I am versus how fatigued I am. Minus 30, really tired. But you start coming back, give myself that one day of rest, form comes back a little bit. Give myself another day of rest. Give myself another day of rest. Give myself another day of rest to the point that today, my form very quickly shows little bits of freshness. You wanna race somewhere in like the just slightly positive, like if we're saying numbers five to 15, so that you're fresh, but you haven't lost a ton of fitness. So you can see that my fitness is just creeping down little bits and that's totally normal. But we're just giving little bits of snap as we go. And that's that, that's it. I wanted to go for a run today, but delays, weather, travel, didn't work. That's life. That's the biggest thing about the taper process. Don't get stressed out about stuff. It's all right. Bedtime? Bedtime hours ago. Bedtime. Later, trainiacs. 
Oh, make sure you're subscribed to see how this week goes in Half Ironman Puerto Rico. Later.